the Chiefs, the Chiefs lost the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 55. Um, they got smacked. They got battered. They had their star quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, running around. And their main problem in that Super Bowl was their offensive line. They were hurt. They were no match for the Buccaneers. And the Chiefs took it to heart. Credit to the Chiefs. They took it to heart. They analyzed the problem. And they fixed it. They spent all their offseason fixing that that problem. And the latest acquisition just goes to show how much a team could do when they really want to win, when they really want to be contenders and put the best team forward, put the best team out there. The Chiefs have traded for Orlando Brown Jr. The Chiefs get Orlando Brown Jr. Um, They get a 2021 second-round pick, and they get a 2022 sixth-round pick, and they send to the Ravens a 2021 first-round pick, 2021 third-round pick, 2021 fourth-round pick, and a 2022 fifth-round pick. And now, now the Chiefs are ready to run it back. They have fixed their offensive line. Um, Orlando Brown, he's a pro bowler. He didn't want to play right tackle with the Ravens. That's that's the spot that they were going to put him back in as right tackle. And unfortunately for him, he, his dad, he was also a left tackle in the NFL. And unfortunately for him, he passed away, I think, in 2011. But he made a promise to his dad that he would play left tackle. And now he fulfills that promise to his dad getting traded to the Chiefs. He's going to be their starting left tackle. He's going to be the anchor of that offensive line. They are going to they are building this offensive line around Orlando Brown. And other notable signings and acquisitions that the Chiefs have made this offseason. They signed Joe Tony for 5 years, 80 million dollar deal. Also, they got Kyle Long to come out of retirement. He's going to play guard or tackle. They signed they signed Austin Blythe from the Rams. He was their starting center last year. Um, their starting guard, Laurent Duvernay-Tardif, is coming back from opting out of the 2020 season. So all in all, the Chiefs have signed three offensive, li- three offensive linemen through free agency. They got two offensive linemen coming back from opt-outs, and they trade for Orlando Brown. That's a lot. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of manpower that is coming back to the offensive line. They saw how overmatched they were to the Buccaneers in the Super Bowl. And they fixed it. They, they're they keeping their promise to Patrick Mahomes that they're going to always have a competitive team. And they're going to look out for their quarterback. And by all means, all these signings, all these trades, all these players coming back, the Chiefs are the Chiefs are being a Class A organization for Patrick Mahomes. They're looking at him. They're like, we understand that you're our generational talent and that our window is now. As long as you're in your prime, that's our window. We're going to try to take care of you. We're going to try to put the best team that we can around you. And as long as you keep playing like that, we're always going to have a chance. So I tip my hat to the Chiefs. I tip my hat to Andy Reid, to their general manager for making these moves and building an offensive line for Patrick Mahomes so that he could stay upright, so that he could continue to terrorize um, the NFL. And now, by the way the Buccaneers are rebuilding their team or how they're bringing everybody back, and how the Chiefs are um, fixing their offensive line, I'm very excited to possibly see a rematch. A beefed-up Chiefs offensive line going at it against the Buccaneers and how they brought everybody back. That would be amazing. That would be... Uh, I would I would be all for it. I would, I would not be against a rematch next year of the Chiefs versus the Buccaneers just to see how it would play out now that the Chiefs have a legit, a legit offensive line. And this also got me thinking... Poor Russell Wilson. I'm like, I'm, there's been rumors that he wants to get out. That you know, he, he might be going to the Bears. He he might be going to the Cowboys, going to the Raiders. There's a lot of teams that were in the Russell Wilson sweepstakes. But man, he's been running for his life his whole career, and he's been asking the Seahawks to give give him a competent offensive line for as long as I can remember. And the Seahawks have just not been able to make the choir. They, they don't. They don't go for it, or they have they've missed in the drafts, or they haven't signed the players. But the Chiefs, in one off season, they saw what the problem was. They saw what Patrick Mahomes needed, and they went out to get it. They traded for a, a Pro Bowl left tackle. They signed a Pro Bowl left guard. They signed a starting center. They're getting players back. They're making moves, and now Russell Wilson is probably in Seattle thinking like, man. I wish my Seahawks, I wish my team did the same thing that they're doing for Patrick Mahomes. 
but we'll see we'll see how that saga ends if he stays with the Seahawks if he moves on but I like I said I got to tip my hat to the Chiefs for rebuilding their offensive line they analyzed their problem it was easy it was it was apparent and you, you didn't have to be a great offensive mind you didn't have to be a guru to see what the problem was with the Chiefs in the in the Super Bowl it was their offensive line they couldn't protect they couldn't keep Patrick Mahomes in the pocket he was running for his life and the Chiefs addressed it and the final piece was trading for Orlando Brown Jr. So I wish Orlando Brown Jr. the best. Uh, I'm happy for him. I'm happy that he get, he got to keep his promise to his dad. He's now a left tackle, just like his dad. And I'm excited to see how the Chiefs play in 2021. And I hope I would not be mad if we get a Buccaneers versus Chiefs rematch in the Super Bowl. 